The Last Jedi left some fans shocked by Luke Skywalker's story and ending. Looking back, would you change anything in your script or do you stand by all your choices? No, nope, stand by every choice. Looking back, would you change anything in your script or do you stand by all your choices? No, nope, stand by every choice. Looking back, would you change anything in your script or do you stand by all your choices? No, nope, stand by every choice. Looking back, would you change anything in your script or do you stand by all your choices? No, nope, stand by every choice. Looking back, would you change anything Anything in your script or do you stand by all your choices? Nope, stand by every choice. What orders from Mordor, my lord? What does the eye command? We have work to do. Star Wars as a franchise has always been the subject of heavy debate. Which is the best Star Wars movie? Who is the best Star Wars character? What movie was the best of the original trilogy? Is the original trilogy overrated? And were the prequels really terrible or did people just have a stick up their ass? Now as time passes these debates are being settled, but as time goes on new debates present themselves. And with new information presenting itself every day these debates tend to be revived and resettled. One debate that has been very much ongoing, especially over the past five years, is which is the worst Star Wars movie of all time. For a time, the general consensus, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, was that Return of the Jedi was the worst. And then the general consensus was that Attack of the Clones was the worst. And as of 2017, it appeared fans had settled on a new clear contender for that notorious title. Star Wars The Last Jedi at release was polarizing at best, and utterly despised at worst, and not without good reason. Make no mistake, the hatred for The Last Jedi, helmed by an individual who didn't care about the lore, openly lashed out at the fans, and funded by a liar and a corporate entity that disrespected the original creator, absolutely deserves the hate. As hated as The Force Awakens was, it still had a lot of love and a lot of forgiveness from disgruntled fans that were disappointed and infuriated with the film's startling lack of imagination. And Star Wars as a whole still had open plot threads to be fulfilled, characters to be explored, and legends to return. The franchise still had some bloody life left, and make no mistake, that movie ruined everything it had left to offer fans. Well, except for one psychotic group of melodramatic, romantically twisted morons. And ever since December 2017, only a week after I'd started my channel in fact, it was widely regarded that The Last Jedi was the worst Star Wars movie ever made, and the most hated. How could Disney make something even worse than this? <laughs> what? Two years later, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker was released, and unlike The Last Jedi, which had a small group of cult loyalists, The Rise of Skywalker pissed off just about everyone Star Wars had left. Many longtime fans didn't even bother to show up. Those who were already too invested despite not loving the Disney movies just went out of obligation, not enthusiasm, and the cult following of Ryan Johnson's abortion had their dreams shattered when everything The Last Jedi set up, well, almost everything, was retconned into oblivion. Which, if you ask me, is poetic justice given what happened. So we have episodes 8 and 9, both of them are dreadful movies, but which is the worst? I want to keep this video short and sweet, just to summarize what I believe to be the case, and what I can only hope the majority of you would be inclined to agree with. This will be a very surface level analysis between the two movies, but enough hopefully to establish who our winner, or I guess I should say, who our clear loser is. Let's begin. Both the movies inject forced political nonsense that were not intended for narrative purposes, but rather for the public image. The Last Jedi's anti-capitalist Canto Bite sequence, its heavy diversity quota that it tried to fulfill, and feminist archetype character Admiral Holdo are clear enough evidence of that. In The Rise of Skywalker, there's no forced political detour that tanks the pacing of the film, and as a matter of fact, the only thing out of place and forced in that regard was the same-sex kiss shed by two nameless characters at the very end. It had no purpose and was placed front and center so that we didn't miss it. So The Last Jedi is worse on this particular aspect. The Mary Sue criticism of Rey's character is very much prevalent throughout both films. Admittedly, The Rise of Skywalker does try to provide some validation for Rey's power, but she's still ridiculously overpowered, wins every battle on her first attempt, has characters just flock to her for no reason, both legacy characters and new ones, 
Let's get on to the lore contradictions. The Last Jedi introduces the ability to transfer matter through the Force, a power never before seen in the mainline episodes, despite the fact that the Jedi have been removed from the height of their power, and no one in the Jedi Council, nor Palpatine or Anakin, the Chosen One himself, was able to perform this feat. This opens up a ton of questions of when that ability could have been used to negate certain plot points in the previous movies. The Last Jedi also introduces the ability to light speed ram a Star Destroyer to death, which fucks up a ton of space battle encounters dating back as far as the Phantom Menace. This in actuality ruins the stakes in space battles as a whole because it's essentially a one-hit KO weapon that any ship can use. But the biggest fuck up to the lore was that The Last Jedi presented the ability of Force Ghosts to interact with the physical plane in a potentially deadly manner, mind you, introducing just about a thousand questions which have still yet to be answered. The Rise of Skywalker introduces Force Heal, an ability I've only ever seen in extended material, the video game specifically, but this was a necessary gameplay mechanic. Force Heal in the mainline Star Wars movies, and from Rey no less, the character wasn't given any formal Jedi training, and whose training came from a retcon character who had nowhere near the knowledge and wisdom of Master Yoda, she is allowed to use Force Heal, an essentially universe-breaking skill which would have voided just about all of the stakes in every lightsaber encounter in the prequels, which fully trained Jedi Masters took part in. Now let's talk about the retcons. The Last Jedi retcons the character of General Hux, turning him from a competent commander to a laughable goof, Finn's crippling spinal injury, the motivations of Supreme Leader Snoke, the destruction of Starkiller Base, having any consequences on the First Order whatsoever, using the most impractical bombers in movie history instead of Y-Wings, Rey's origins and the identity of her parents, the meeting of Poe and Rey, General Leia's proficiency with the Force, and the character of Luke Skywalker as a whole, and why he travelled to the island of Octo, as well as his knowledge and wisdom being simply abandoned in favour of attempted child murder. And these are only the retcons off the top of my head. The Rise of Skywalker, on the other hand, retcons the hinted romance of Finn and Rose, the terrible Last Jedi bombers, the lightspeed ram ability, Leia's status as a Jedi Master, the origins of Snoke, Kylo Ren's broken mask, and it tries to retcon the broken shards of the Star Wars franchise lying dormant on the floor, resulting from Ryan Johnson essentially smashing the vase of Star Wars onto the ground. Attempts to glue it all back together, only for the shards to fall apart once again miserably. However, the one retcon that The Rise of Skywalker unforgivably commits was possibly the biggest retcon in movie history, and that is the resurrection of Emperor Palpatine, an iconic villain that perished back in 1983, almost 40 years ago. And what this does is make the entirety of the mainline Star Wars episodes utterly pointless, with laughable explanation, mind you. Now we come to common sense. This category is essentially the writer-director being utterly retarded. The Last Jedi completely disregards simple space physics regarding gravity-driven bombs outside of the atmosphere, curving energy mortars in space, Leia somehow not imploding in the vacuum of space, Captain Phasma opting for decapitation as a means of a painful execution, Rose's speeder catching up with Finn's after having travelled in the opposite direction for a substantial period of time, Luke actively wasting time and playing word games with Rey to delay the plot, Holdo not telling Poe the plan to evacuate, Rose and Finn getting arrested on Canto Bite whilst seeking the Codebreaker, only to find the exact Codebreaker they need in the jail cell with them, Kylo sending every TIE fighter after the Millennium Falcon during the Battle of Krayt, and anything to do with Ghost Yoda and the four slave children. The Rise of Skywalker has Palpatine wanting to kill Rey at the beginning of the movie, but by the end of the movie it turns out he needs her alive. Palpatine's loyalist built a star fleet with Death Star tech that is 10,000 times bigger than the current First Order arsenal. Ghost Luke lifts his X-Wing out of the ground, and it still works after years of submersion. The star fleet on Exegol not being able to fly up, Rey growling force lightning into existence, General Hux is a spy, the force dyad that heals Palpatine and gives him fleet-destroying force lightning capabilities that can be overpowered by two lightsabers, Rey taking the Skywalker name, Finn's I got a feeling bullshit, General Leia's drop dead moment, Lando Calrissian just waiting out in the desert for the past 30 years with no purpose whatsoever, and a whole bunch of other stuff I'm probably forgetting that doesn't make any sense. Finally, let's look at how the legacy characters were treated in each respective film. In The Last Jedi, General Leia's moment, shall we call it, was extremely uncomfortable, and I'd even go as far as to say disrespectful to the deceased actresses, as well as being executed in an absolute ludicrous manner. 
The assassination of Luke Skywalker's character and the mistreatment of the actor himself, Mark Hamill, who has been well documented expressing his disdain for the character in the film itself. The rise of Skywalker in its own way opts to treat the legacy characters with some morsel of respect. Leia's involvement is ridiculous and her death is nonsensical, but at least she maintained her dignity to some extent. I'd say her treatment here was only slightly better than it was in The Last Jedi. Han Solo was given a moment to shine, even though it wasn't actually Han Solo, it was a memory. The film showed him being a loving father, and if nothing else, showed us that he mattered to other characters. That is, except for Lando for some reason. Speaking of Lando, aside from his odd vacation in the desert, he is essentially the same character, just withered and grey, and with all the charisma in the world. Chewbacca was finally shown some respect as well, having actual purpose in this movie, as well as being valued by other characters throughout. Luke Skywalker was finally being portrayed as, well, Luke Skywalker, the wise, optimistic, kind-hearted Jedi Master he likely became after Return of the Jedi. And that brings us to Palpatine and the rest. While Palpatine was still presented as he essentially was at the end of Return of the Jedi and in Revenge of the Sith, I can't imagine anything more disrespectful to the character and to Star Wars as a whole than digging him up again. And not to mention the exploitation of past cast members to voice characters long dead in the final confrontation. The rise of Skywalker, while respecting some of Star Wars' legs, he absolutely disregards all the rest. So finally that brings us here, to which film is worse, The Rise of Skywalker or The Last Jedi? It's honestly not easy to answer this. I've currently made six videos going through The Rise of Skywalker beat by beat, and I'm only up to... Oh, they fly now! They fly now! I honestly doubt I'll ever finish that series, seeing as collectively those videos cover only the first quarter of the film, and the total runtime as it stands now is collectively over two hours long. And as broken as The Last Jedi is, I'm gonna have to say The Rise of Skywalker is worse. The worst Star Wars film ever made. The reason I say this is that even though The Last Jedi is rotten to the core with errors, a lot, not all, but a lot of those are self-contained within the film itself. The Rise of Skywalker's very foundation and premise affects and retcons the entirety of Star Wars as a whole and raises questions dating back as far as The Phantom Menace. The movie is a next level clusterfuck. However, there are some, not many, but some mitigating circumstances for the failures of The Rise of Skywalker. And those mitigating circumstances are from The Last Jedi itself. People are going to say that J.J. Abrams is the one that started things out on the wrong foot with The Force Awakens, and while that's partially true, the series was still salvageable. The Force Awakens left us with so many open threads to be explored. It was The Last Jedi that killed those threads in favor of one man's attempt to shock the audience, and it left Episode Nine with nothing new. The Last Jedi killed the main villain, the ominous and mysterious leader Snoke. It ruined Luke's character to springboard the character of Rey, and then killed off Luke Skywalker like it was nothing. And after Luke added nothing of value to the film, it killed off Admiral Akbar, introduced new characters with larger roles than the legacy characters and killed them off too, turned Kylo Ren into an absolute moron, killed the mystery behind Rey's parents, made Force Ghosts laughable, ruined space battles and, well, space itself, completely derailed Finn's character and tried to change the lore surrounding the entire saga as to the meaning of balance in the Force, as well as ruining the stakes of Star Wars. Since if characters find themselves in a situation of certain death, you can absolutely count on Disney to bullshit them out of trouble. Now, The Rise of Skywalker is the sequel to that. The Last Jedi was the foundation for The Rise of Skywalker, and without decanonizing The Last Jedi out of the timeline, the chances of The Rise of Skywalker being good were slim to none. In an attempt to repair the irreversible damage The Last Jedi made, it simultaneously creates even more problems. The Rise of Skywalker had one movie to give us a believable, endearing character dynamic between the three main characters who hadn't collectively shared a scene up till that point. There was no compelling story left, as The Last Jedi blew Kylo Ren's load way too early and did nothing with it. The shine of him as a villain in the series was long gone. Luke Skywalker and Han Solo were dead, and Leia was still alive despite Carrie Fisher's tragic passing. And of course, there was no main villain or threat left. Somehow they had to generate a movie with broken universe lore and physics, dead legacy characters, and no story left. So I honestly can't say I'm surprised with the action they took in bringing back the Emperor. Not that I excuse or forgive this action, but what's the easiest thing a corporate entity like Disney could do to cover up for Ryan Johnson's colossal fuck-up? Bringing back the Emperor and trying to undo all of the moronic things he introduced. Retcon certain parts of the lore he broke, whilst for some reason deciding to break even more lore with the Force Ghost and Force Heal. Give Rey a contrived reason for her origins and her absolute godlike power. 
give Leia a serviceable death whilst including her in the movie. Somehow, since Ryan Johnson didn't kill her off, and instead brought her back from the dead, which was extremely uncomfortable to watch, and simultaneously attempt to address every criticism and concern that the fans had for the previous two movies, which at this point, especially after The Last Jedi, was ranking in the thousands, thousands of issues. So what am I getting at here? Is The Rise of Skywalker the worst Star Wars movie ever made? Yes. But is it the most hated Star Wars movie of all time? No. That title still belongs to The Last Jedi and probably always will. The deciding factor here in this is the intention behind each movie as well as the stakes. Star Wars had a much more life in the fandom prior to the midnight release of The Last Jedi. After The Last Jedi, so many people were driven away from the franchise, and many that remained were apathetic at best. But in addition to that, I distinctly remembered enjoying watching The Rise of Skywalker infinitely more than The Last Jedi. And the reason behind that, and I think that most of us can agree, is that The Rise of Skywalker commits a lot of bad by trying to do a lot of good. It tried to give fans something they could walk away from and be happy with. It tries to address criticisms and tries to essentially revive Star Wars from uh, the seventh circle of hell that it was tossed into. The Last Jedi, on the other hand, commits so much bad to the characters, the lore, and the franchise legacy, but it seems to do it with the intent of giving fans the middle finger at every turn. I've always been an avid believer in the audience not being able to tell the artist what to do, but I firmly believe this doesn't apply to artists taking another man's IP like Star Wars. There's a grey area where fans can express how they feel and dictate the artist to a certain extent, especially when the artist doesn't give a crap about the IP they are appropriating. However, Ryan Johnson did write his story with the fans in mind, but as I said, he wanted to simultaneously laugh at them with his creative decisions, whilst being seemingly as disrespectful as possible to what came before. And if you want any more proof for the intentions behind each individual film, just look at how each respective director has addressed the criticism regarding their film after the release. Good, bad, some people hated it, some people loved it. Uh, it's, it was just all over the place, but it was, uh, you know, to, to those who didn't like it, I totally get it and respect it. To those who loved it, uh, I'm, I'm grateful and dubious of your taste. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm nothing but grateful. Um, but obviously, a lot of people worked a lot uh, of hours to do something that people would, you know, make people feel good and that they love. And anytime someone doesn't like it, you know, you, you, you think, oh, yeah, I could have done that better. I should have done that. And, I'm, you know, you try to, like, take it in. But for the most part, I'm incredibly grateful to everyone who worked so hard to do it. And for the people who saw it and, and loved it, I'm, you know, grateful to them, too. I'm just, you know, obviously uh, I'm incredibly proud of the entire crew and, uh, and cast. And I, I think they all deserve to be recognized for, I, I think, extraordinary work. Was there any of the criticism that you read that you may feel is now kind of fair? No, no. But I'm happy to ruin people's childhoods. The, thi the <laughs> thing is, though, especially with a Star Wars movie, having grown up as a Star Wars fan, every single Star Wars thing that comes out, oh. I've got, every fan has stuff they love, stuff they hate about it. Every movie has its lovers and its haters. Everybody's got, you know, every single one, going back to the originals. We were so lucky there wasn't social media when Empire Strikes Back Oh my God, Empire out. would have gotten roasted. If you look at the criticisms of The Last Jedi, can you imagine what they would have said about Luke just getting his ass handed to him by right. Vader? And, and like, oh my God, they would have- hand getting cut off and They would have gotten freaked out, and, yeah. The Last Jedi left some fans shocked by Luke Skywalker's story and ending. Looking back, would you change anything in your script or do you stand by all your choices? Nope, stand by every choice. Do you see the difference in intent? This is why, despite The Rise of Skywalker being the worst Star Wars film ever made, it will never be as hated and despised as The Last Jedi. Unless you're a Raylo fan. In which case, suck shit. Anyways, thanks everyone for watching this video. Feel free to leave your thoughts below. This was a very surface level dissection and comparison, so I do apologize for the lack of depth. I really just wanted to get my thoughts out there on this one. If you want something Star Wars related but much more in depth, check out the series I spoke of regarding the rise of Skywalker on my channel. It's currently six videos, and I imagine I'll make a seventh down the line. Or check out my series Revenge of the Prequels. I'm sure you'll be entertained at the very least. Special thanks to my patrons. You guys are amazing, and thank you for your support. And thank you to my YouTube members as well for all of your support. It means so much and it helps me out a great deal. If you'd like to contact me, feel free to tag me on Twitter or join the channel's Discord server. Links for both are in the description. And lastly, thanks for staying till the end of the video. You are a legend and I'll see you next time.